The lifeless body of a farmer who for 26 years had faithfully cultivated his land was discovered in his paddy field on the night of the 17th of last month. Mahabili Bikala Peta, Dibulagalaha, Velikan the Pradesh, Atapasuki, the Nakepe Tuladim, and the Halu Dharani Pata Varshavat Samakin, Emma Pradesh, Vikovinke Aswen, Jalin Tetri Menisa, own Daddy Apahazuta and Tapato Tibeneva. Ratnayaka, who was chasing the elephant in order to fulfill his journalistic responsibility, was mauled by the elephant and fell victim. Ratnayaka suffered serious head injuries and succumbed upon admission to the Hingurakura Divisional Hospital. He was a 46-year-old father of three. Sri Lanka, famed as the granary of the East, has gained this prestigious title due to its self-sufficiency in all type of grain, particularly due to the extensive cultivation of rice. Even today, rice being the staple food occupies 34% of the total cultivation of the country. The process of rice cultivation consists of several procedures out of which post-harvest activities play a crucial role. Irrespective of the fine practices that have been exercised when harvesting, Absence of established post-harvest activities will result in the crop failing to be accepted as fit to be consumed. Among the post-harvest activities, drying can be identified as the most vital role as it is only through this process grain moisture content can be reduced to a suitable level for storage. Delays in drying, incomplete drying in the past the process of drying could be done in farms or paddy fields, but today, due to the increasing threats of wild elephants, this practice has been abandoned by most farmers. However, as farmers too are concerned about providing their harvest according to the stated quality standards, they have come up with alternative methods for drying. In Polognarua and its suburbs, Farmers drying their paddy on carpeted roads is a common sight during the harvesting season. I have been involved in farming for some time. As farmers, we all face certain issues. Mainly when selling the house to the paddy marketing board, there are certain concerns like the grain moisture levels being a maximum of 14%. About 20 to 30 years ago, farmers upon reaping their harvest would sheaf it and then thresh it only after 2 to 3 days as the moisture levels would then come down to around 14%. But today, due to threats from wild elephants, farmers fail to practice this method. So they always try to reap in the morning, collect it in the evening and then clean it using the tsunami. The grain moisture of this harvest would be 18 to 20 percent and therefore cannot be sold to the paddy marketing board because drying facilities are not available for the farmers. When we keep such a harvest in the farms, the quality decreases. To avoid this, we dry the harvest on roads. The farmers would leave space for the vehicles to move and use the rest of the roads for drying. But even then, a considerable amount of about 5 to 10 percent of paddy is being wasted as it falls off to the gravel. If unexpected rains fall, 
a huge quantity would go into waste as there won't be ample time for the paddy to be collected to be taken to the farms. Therefore, from the time the harvest is reaped till the time it reaches the paddy marketing board, a large amount goes into waste. What I think is, if a proper method is introduced where the drying can be done at the paddy fields or the farms itself, the wastage could be considerably reduced. Wastage of paddy produced through hard labor is not a concern limited only to farmers as millers do face similar problems due to the absence of proper drying methods. September Decatuna Wagi Nagota Wayan Kepi Arambuenawa Nabana Mill September Pahalo Reaping the harvest begins around second or third September. The rainy season starts after the fifteenth of September. The harvest which gets caught to this rain cannot be stored in bags. Then we have to throw our harvest. We pawn our jewelry in order to fund our cultivation. At the end, when we make rice out of it and sell, we are unable to even feed our children. We are in tears all the time. Three meals a day is a luxury for us. If we are being given adequate storage facilities and introduce drying methods, we will learn to manage with the little we have. Our company is a medium scale dry smell. Due to the lack of technology and new equipment to dry the paddy during the harvesting season, we face a lot of problems when storing it. Thus, during the process of converting paddy to rice, as the quality does not reach the expected standards of rice, and when making byproducts, we once again face issues. The biggest issue paddy farmers face is not having proper techniques for drying the harvest when reaping during the rainy season. During this season, grain moisture could increase up to 26%. In the Berun Krishna, now we are seeing the Giritala, Polnare Giritala, and Solar Milila. My name is Krishna. I work in a mill in Giritala in Polnare. There are around 10 to 15 people here in this mill alone. We can't work in rainy season. We can only work when it is sunny. If we are to work here, there should be proper paddy. If there is good paddy, the owners can give work to more people and sustain them. Now, if we reap the harvest in the third month, we can work only until the sixth month. After the sixth month, there won't be work for one or two months for us. Then when the harvest is reaped during the eighth month, we work in the mills with that until the end of the year. In January and February, we live off the money we earned. We won't be having work. If the mills get good paddy, we can work throughout the year because they can store the paddy. If there are proper storage facilities, hundreds of people like us can work in these mills and earn a living for their families. Molding of paddy is an issue which affects both the farmers and the millers greatly and it has become one of the biggest concerns of millers. At such instances, the time, money and labour of both parties go into waste as it can then only be used for animal consumption. This situation arises due to the lack of proper drying methods to be used by both farmers and most of the millers. Thus, annually a considerable amount of paddy is being used for animal consumption. The farmers in these areas conduct business with us in good faith and we buy the paddy based on competitive prices. We are using this place as a collection centre in Poland Narva because we can collect paddy from all the districts in the northeastern provinces and provide them to central parts of the country as well as to Colombo to be converted to rice and to provide paddy to small scale millers. If a mill has proper drying and storing facilities, we would be able to employ more people, thereby not only uplifting the living conditions of 20 to 30 people who currently work here, but also a couple of hundred villages. This would help 
improve the livelihood of this village and the areas around.